So you want to know how to get shots like this. So hello and welcome back and yes in this video we're going to be talking about how to film those kind of shots using action cameras like the Insta360 X3. So if you're new here make sure you go down there and hit that subscribe button that's really going to help me to grow this channel so I can do kind of more content like this. So a little bit about me and kind of what I do I'm a mountain guide and I'm based out in Chamonix France so I take people out into the mountains all the time and I also have a real passion for making little edits and films about what I'm doing and I'm kind of on this like learning process about how to do that better and better. And sometimes it's quite difficult to make videos whilst I'm actually guiding, but I feel like tools like this really make things a lot easier. For me, by far the biggest game changing piece of kit that's come out in the last few years for filming high mountain action sports like alpine climbing, skiing, paragliding has been 360 cameras. I've played around with GoPros and drones and normal cameras and I never seem to get the kind of results that I want as easily with those other things. You know, a drone, even the small ones, they are still quite bulky and it's kind of hard to justify carrying that all the time. And unless you've got a filmmaker who's actually knows how to use a camera and is pointing a camera at you, you're never gonna get the same kind of framing and everything that you can from a 360 camera. So this is the camera that I use. It's the Insta360 X3. And I've had this for a few months now and I've used it for skiing, climbing, mountain biking and paragliding. And for me, this is the best model for filming those types of activities. So basically the way these cameras work is they have two lenses, one on each side of the device and it's filming in kind of 180 degrees on one side and 180 degrees on the other side. And then it stitches those images together so you have a 360 degree view of what's going on. Now, obviously on this line between the two lenses, it's not gonna be perfect, but if you are filming close up, you would just point the lens directly at what you want to film. This camera has a threaded mount in the bottom of it, which is super useful for attaching it to all kinds of different attachment points. You know, you can attach it to a tripod, you can attach it to one of these selfie sticks. So when the camera is kind of off uh, anything, it's a super neat, easy package. It easily fits into a pocket. The battery is super easy to take in and out on this device. It literally just pops out like that and clips in and it's super solid. I've never had it like accidentally come out. It's got a USB-C charger, which is super handy. You can charge it anywhere. And for me, one of the best features about this is it has a quick capture button. So with that button, you can turn the camera on and start recording with one press of the button. And then you can leave it running. And the runtime on these is amazing. I've had it on for like half an hour filming the whole time. So I can then, when I'm going back into the editing software, I can choose the moments that work and kind of make a little cut of those and then, you know, just export that footage. So that quick capture button turns it on, starts recording, and then when you press it again, it stops recording and turns the camera off. So you only really need one button to kind of operate this thing whilst you're out in the field. That button's also got a little raised part on it as well, so you can feel it with gloves on. So sometimes I'm operating the camera when it's sticking out of my bag like this, so it's nice to be able to do that and feel what's going on. There's also other modes as well, so you can have single frame shooting, you can take photos, uh, all kinds of stuff. But for me, mostly I just use it kind of filming in 30 frames a second. That means I can slow it down a little bit if I want to. And it also turns out to be really nice smooth footage 
for use on social media, so for on, on Instagram, for example. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should definitely go and check it out. I post loads of useful reels, so you can kind of learn a lot from those reels there. So this thing records in stereo sound as well, which is super nice. And you can have these little wind protectors that go on the side of it like that. So then you can be also recording in full stereo even when it's windy. So you can get a good sense of, you know, the actual real sound that's happening. And that's really useful if you're doing like talking to the camera whilst you're doing something. So let's say you're climbing a pitch or something and, and I want to talk through what I'm doing. I could definitely imagine using that setup for something like that. You can also export this footage in 360 and upload that straight to YouTube as well. In fact, I did do a video which is a full 360 video that you can kind of move the camera around uh, and that's on this YouTube channel as well. Uh, I'll leave a link to it up there. So other little accessories that are super useful are things like the lens cover here. That one just pops over the lenses and gives them some good protection. I did actually quite annoyingly get a scratch on this lens very soon after getting this camera, which was very disappointing. I was pretty sad about it. It was definitely more to do with my clumsiness than, you know, the fragility of the camera. I really smashed it off a piece of hard granite and it was never going to survive from that. But actually, amazingly, that one little scratch hasn't actually caused me that much issues. There are lens cover protectors that you can get for these as well and that could be a good idea if you're doing like more rock climbing but for skiing and for paragliding I've never felt the need to have those types of things on the outside of the camera and it does a slightly affect the quality of the image as well so I'd say maybe try and leave them off if you can but if you are going to be doing some rock climbing with this camera for example it might be worth having those lens covers on. Also comes with a protective sleeve as well which you can put over the camera but unfortunately it doesn't work when you put the microphone adhesive mounts on for the wind noise protectors it kind of gets a bit snarled up on there so I've kind of moved away from using that one and I use this kind of rubberized one instead, which still fits over quite neatly like that. So generally when I'm out filming for the day, I can get several hours of footage out of this with the battery, but I also carry a spare battery as well. And that I have that in a little case like this, spare battery and also a spare memory card as well in there. So let's talk about mounts and mounting options for this camera. So the first mounting option to talk about would be the Insta360 invisible selfie stick, which you can buy with this camera as a package directly from Insta360. And this is the thing that I use the most. It's super easy and it's super well made. And basically this just screws into the bottom of the camera, you know, tighten it up like that. And it's nice and solid on the end there. And then basically this just extends out by pulling and yeah, it's fairly long. You can use that in various ways. You can hold it like a selfie stick. And you know, if you're careful about what you're doing with your hand, it's not so obvious that you're holding a pole in your hand and it just kind of looks like the, the camera is like floating in front of you and you get a really cool image from that. So here's an example of me walking along the summit ridge of Mont Blanc. So with this pole, I also have it mounted in my backpack and let me show you how I set that up. So this is the bag that I use the most throughout the summer. This is a Rab Latoc 20. And this is the perfect bag, I think, for doing kind of rock ridges and scrambles, multi-pitch rock climbs, you know, single day things where you're going out and trying to move quickly through the mountains over rock, which I do quite a lot of the time over the summer. This bag is great. It's got pockets on the front there for snacks and phones and things. It's nice and light, it's super hard wearing, and it's about the perfect size, I think, for single day Alpine use. So quite simply, if I was gonna set this up in this bag, I would basically put the pole and I would extend it all the way out like this, and I'd shove that right in the bottom of the bag and I'm gonna do up that draw cord as tight as I can and just do everything up around the top of the bag and it's fairly solid like that already. It's not really moving around too much, you know, it's, it's kind of staying where it needs to be. You can also, if you get it right in, so the bottom of the selfie stick is right up against the bottom of the, the and the back of, your, of the bag, then it's kind of leaning out a little bit more away from you so you can see a little bit more about what you're Kind of bodies doing. So I have that like that. And then the final thing that I would do is I was just gonna tie this around in a little clove hitch or something like that, just as a little bit of a backup for that camera. Maybe I'm gonna hide that in like that. So that's just floating out of my bag. And I can 
reach up actually and turn the button on whilst I have the bag on. So if I want to sort of save the battery or recording time, I can just have it set up like this and I can reach up and I can press the on button and start recording. There's also voice activation with these cameras as well. I haven't actually experimented that much with this camera doing that. I find that I quite like to just press the button and then I know that it's on and you can listen to the beeps as well. So, you know, you sort of get used to the sound of it turning on and starting to record it. And then you can get used to the sound of turning it off and it finishing recording as well. So I have it set up like this. And then when I finish using it, all I do is simply push down on it, shove that into the, the bag like that. So the protective rubber sleeve means that, you know, it's fairly well protected like that. So if I have to go through a chimney or there's a bit of a move where I know that I'm going to hit the camera, then I can just extend it back away like that and it's also really easy for somebody else to do that as well so sometimes I get people that I'm out in the mountains with to sort of help me just pull the pole out and press the button as well. So obviously backpacks come in all different shapes and designs and something like this which is a roll top closure is a little bit more difficult to do that with but you can if you leave it kind of semi unrolled have it coming out of the top of a bag like this and for a zipped bag like this, which is kind of more of a ski bag, then I have in here on this front pouch is like avalanche safety gear sleeves. And I can have basically that sitting in one of those sleeves and then the zip kind of coming around the, the pole like that. And, you know, you could even devise some way of tying this up and making making that a little bit safer as well. Depends kind of what bag you have and you know what you're using, but there are ways I think to make this work. I think it makes quite a cool shot. Here's a few examples of me skiing and also climbing. I think that these shots are really cool. You can sort of see what's going on and it's kind of just like, you know, floating view of, of the whole surroundings. And you can also, you know, pan around in the edit as well and look behind or around. You know, it's really cool for that, that you can actually not just have one shot, but you can see the whole thing and, you know, edit what you want out of the image. So the next mounting option to talk about is something like this, which I use all the time. It's a little bike guard. And basically, you know, you can screw the camera onto the, onto here like this, you know, have it facing in the direction that you know, that you're going to be wanting to film the most. So for example, you know, have one lens facing forward if that's what you're going to be filming the most, which it will be if it's in your mouth. And then you can kind of have this and you can literally just put it into your mouth and hold it with your teeth. And I find that's a super convenient way to kind of have the camera in my pocket, take it out, put it in my mouth, do a little bit of filming and you're kind of getting a perspective, which is quite, quite cool. You know, it's not super high, um, like sticking out from your helmet. So you can see a little bit more kind of what's going on in front of you. So it might be really interesting for filming, you know, some pictures of climbing, but also I use this for mountain biking and also skiing a little bit as well. So it's a really quick and easy way of having it and you don't have a kind of pole flopping around as well. Also, if you're being filmed by somebody separately, so for example, if there's a drone filming or there's a camera filming, having the camera in your mouth like that, it actually blends in with your sort of jacket down here and it's a bit less obvious than having it on your helmet or on a pole. I got this one from GoPro and it did actually have a clip that you could also clip into a helmet mount as well, but I actually just cut that off because I just found that I wasn't really putting on my helmet that much, but it does work really well. And there are a few other versions of these bite mounts out on the internet as well. So another little accessory that I've been using a little bit for paragliding, I have the Insta360 invisible selfie stick and I've basically just got this little screw mount that screws into the bottom of the pole like that and this is just a kind of like bungee leash thing I think this was off a nut key but you might be able to find something similar it doesn't really matter what it is it could just be a piece of string but this is quite nice because it's bungee and that just clips on so I can't drop the camera whilst I'm flying so the other accessory that I use sometimes is the extended selfie stick like this and I find this is just about big enough to fit in my bag when I'm out skiing or climbing and you can get some really interesting shots that are kind of like, you know, almost like a drone. So it's kind of like a poor man's drone, basically. And it's obviously a lot easier to manage than a drone. Yeah, this thing is super long. I can't remember exactly how long it is, but it's probably like three, 
three and a half meters, something like that. But it is quite fun to play with and you can kind of film people as they're climbing. You know, there's all kinds of shots that you can get with this. You can get really creative. So yeah, that's the kind of systems that I'm using when I'm filming out in the mountains, whether it's climbing or skiing or paragliding or mountain biking. Uh, and then once I've got that footage, I have to edit it. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do that with these. The first way to do it is on your phone. And I actually find that it's quite quick and easy to get used to once you've done a little bit of it. You can, you know, pair the camera and the phone together, import the footage, and then you can reframe it in a few different ways. You can zoom in and out on the image. You can change the perspective. You can track things. There's all kinds of things that you can do. And if you get really creative, you can make some awesome edits. The other way to edit is with the desktop app. And that is a good way to be editing footage for like YouTube videos, for example. And the nice thing is you can export this footage in you know, nine by 16, which is perfect for Instagram reels, for example. And you can also export it in any other aspect ratio as well. So one to one or four by three, 16 by nine, which is great for you know YouTube videos. The great thing is once you've got that 360 image of the whole thing is you can crop out what you want and you can use those images. So sometimes you know I'm using the same shot multiple times to make different things. So if you're interested in cameras like this, there's I'm going to leave a link down in the description and you can head over there and you can check out those cameras yourself. And there might even be some good deals on Black Friday as well. So I hope you found that video useful. If you've got any questions about how I use these accessories or anything about any other accessories, I have tried out a lot of other ways of doing it as well, then feel free to leave a comment down below and I do read everything and try and respond to everybody as well. Thank you very much for watching. There's more videos coming out on this channel over the coming months, so make sure you're subscribed, give us a thumbs up, and yeah, I'll see you soon.